In the 1800s, society sanctioned both approaches to healing. Patients had a choice of using either doctors, called allopaths, or natural healers, called empirics or homeopaths. The two groups waged a bitter philosophical debate. The allopathic doctors called their approach heroic medicine. They believed the physician must aggressively drive disease from the body. They based their practice on what they considered scientific theory. The allopaths used three main techniques. They bled the body to drain out the bad humors. They gave huge doses of toxic minerals like mercury and lead to displace the original disease. They also used surgery, but it was a brutal procedure before anesthesia and infection control. Few patients were willing to have surgery. Most patients feared allopathic methods altogether. Satirist of the day remarked that with allopathic treatment, the patient died of the cure. Competing with the doctors were the empiric healers. Contrary to the doctors, they believed in stimulating the body's own defenses to heal itself. Instead of poisonous minerals, they used vegetable products and non-toxic substances in small quantities. They especially favored herbs learned from Native American and old European traditions. The empirics said they based their remedies not on theory, but on observation and experience. Satirists of the day added that with empiric treatment, the patient died of the disease, not the cure. In the 1800s, doctors tried to stop the popular empirics from collecting their fees by denouncing them as quacks. Economic competition from the empiric healers caused the doctors to found the American Medical Association. But the AMA was a small trade association without political clout, and the balance of medical power remained equal until the turn of the century. Then, new medical treatments emerged that were potentially very profitable. Promoting these methods, the AMA joined with strong financial forces to transform medicine into an industry. The fortunes of Carnegie, Morgan, and Rockefeller financed surgery, radiation, and synthetic drugs. They were to become the economic foundations of the new medical economy. Ironically, John D. Rockefeller himself used only an empiric homeopath while investing in allopathic medicine. Surgery became viable with anesthesia and infection control, and doctors advocated expensive radical operations. These in turn produced the need for a large lucrative hospital system. The allopaths also discovered a new toxic mineral, radium. Radium fever swept medicine. The price of radium rose 1,000% almost overnight. Another costly technological industry entered the hospital system. A drug industry grew out of the booming patent medicine business. Ironically, many of the new synthetic drugs came from plants and empiric remedies. Drug company ads boosted the revenues of the AMA journal 500% in 10 years. The doctors changed educational standards and licensing regulations to exclude the empirics. Soon, only AMA-approved doctors could legally practice medicine. In a brief 20 years, the AMA came to dominate medical practice. Organized Medicine launched a media campaign to associate the empirics with quacks. The code word for competition was quackery. By the 1940s, its quack files had swelled to include 300,000 names. The Fitzgerald Report to Congress named at least a dozen other promising cancer treatments seemingly blocked by organized medicine. Their proponents were mostly doctors and scientists of high reputation. The treatments were immunological or nutritional, dismissing them as quackery were panels of surgeons and radiation therapists. The congressional report emphasized two outstanding cases of alleged suppression, Harry Hoxie and Dr. Andrew C. Ivey. If Hoxie fit the image of a quack, Dr. Ivey certainly did not. The similarity of Dr. Ivey's charges to those of Hoxie was unmistakable. A failed attempt by an AMA official to buy his formulas, followed by blackballing and a refusal to test the therapy. The Fitzgerald report to Congress described a menacing pattern. Fitzgerald concluded in his report, quote, 
Behind this is the weirdest conglomeration of corrupt motives, intrigue, selfishness, jealousy, obstruction, and conspiracy that I have ever seen. Despite its shocking conclusions, the Fitzgerald Report slipped quietly into the appendix of the congressional record. With Dr. Ivey's death, Krabiasen would vanish untested. At the height of the McCarthy era, a dozen other promising treatments would be banned without investigation.